Hey guys, it's uh, Madbird here, and um, welcome to the Banner Saga. It is finally out, the single player um, campaign plot of the uh, Kickstarter game, the Banner Saga, and I've been looking forward to this for a long time, ever since, um, <sighs> have a trick of my apple juice, uh, ever since me and Howard, probably about a year ago, did um, had a look at the, what was it called, Banner Saga Factions, the uh, multiplayer free-to-play equivalent thing, and I pretty much fell in love with the art style immediately because it's just all beautifully hand-drawn and beautiful in general. Oh, hang on, just a second. There we go. Thought it'd be a good idea to have the mouse cursor on so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, we are going to... I've, uh, as you can see, it says resume or restart game, or uh, because I had a I had a quick play of it and played the first chapter, and it it seems really good, so um, hopefully this will be good. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching these videos of me nattering incessantly, since there is a lot of dialogue to read. So um, let's get started. Yes, I want to really restart the Banner Saga. The story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. I really like this map. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern waste. Now it is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. It's really simple, but I love the lore and the world that they have going on. Didn't, didn't really get to see any of that in the um in the free to play. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Ridgehorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. I love the art style of this. So if anybody, if anybody of you, if any one of you uh, played the uh, the multiplayer free to play section, you'll probably recognise this because it is pretty much the same. It sort of starts off the same way. It used it used this as sort of like an intro to the combat, and uh, same thing here. So um, uh, so we are uh, the main character at this point is this bloke down here. He's just lounging against the pillar because he's a badass and. Um, he doesn't do any fighting, he's a bit too... he's too much of a boss for that, he gets other people to do his fighting for him, presumably these two. So, uh, you have arrived just in time. The Chieftain in Red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Click and drag around the screen to see your surroundings, blah blah blah. This portrait shows the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your ally is in blue, enemy is in red. It is your turn to act. Movement happens before action. 
Some characters fill more tiles than others. The horned allies are a race of giants called the Baal, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on strategy. Click the tile where you want them to go and click confirm. To target the enemy, click on the tile on which they stand. And you can do, uh, you can, the way the combat works is that you can do damage to armor, which makes it easy to hurt them, or you can do damage to strength, which makes it harder for them to hurt you. And it's sort of equally important, because if they have really high armor and real low strength, you're not going to be able to do any damage to them. If the strength falls to zero, the character falls in battle. The armor blocks enemy st uh, blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break attack, which is one of this one here. By breaking armor, you open them up to m take more damage in the future. Yeah, the enemy only has five strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Do it. As you can see, everything is beautifully hand drawn and well, hand drawn on a computer, but which still counts because most stuff is just all fucking <laughs> polar bear back here. But yeah, it is a stunning game, to, and it just gets more beautiful later on. After taking an action, your turn ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you are outnumbered. Despite being at full strength, Chieftain will do little damage against your shield banger's high armor. Hey, uh, you get you get you have um, willpower, which you can basically use to do a bit more damage or move a little bit further. By clicking the gold tiles, the character can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower per gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemies show how close you have to be to get in range. Move your warhawk into attack range now. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your warhawk has a special ability to give him a unique advantage. Tempest. Which basically does this. Which is pretty fucking badass. Pillage! That, that'll make quick work of the Chieftain's bodyguards. When there is only one enemy player left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. If the character does not move on this on this turn, he can re rest to... Re oh, I don't know what words. If the character does not move on his turn, he can rest to regain one willpower. The Chieftain will rest this turn. Which basically means I can punch him in the face. Use willpower to do one more damage and kill the fuck. Victory! The foe is lying dead at your farm. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the threats arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I'm in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with Doppler King's tithe. Take any men you need, they're loyal, I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Chapter 1, Only the Sun Has Stopped. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Erik, steward of Strand. I manage the government's business. Ubin, isn't it? Uh, it is. The governor tells me you're, you'll be giving us a hand. What do you have in mind? Scalfings that you didn't hack up in this Great Hall. 
scattered after you took out the chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. We w was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Okay, and this is sort of like the little overworld map for this town. There's a different one for each town, and if you make camp or anything, which is pretty cool. So there's the market down here. Uh, just a bit of backstory first. Uh, so basically, the gods, like, fought themselves to death, I think. I'm not 100% on the plot. And then there's the Val, who are the big giant guys, and there's humans, obviously. And the Val and the humans were sort of at war, but then they stopped. And because there's, um, sort of like demon, think like Darkspawn from Dragon Age or whatever, just sort of ambiguous enemy appeared, the Dredge, who were these sort of like mechanical demon guys. And, um, yeah, so they showed up and they sort of had to unite against them, and now there's this truce between the Val and the humans, and that's pretty much it. And the sun has stopped, which is pretty cool. That's a really nice concept. Let's go to the market. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Coloured canvases flap on a briny current. One man in, a partic in particular blanches at you as you approach. Had, I'm not in the mood today. For, for what? Talking to an idiot. Wow. The Scalfing's chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Had. So you, so when you tell me where, what, <laughs> So when you tell me what right anus the rest of them crawl back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. I don't have the patience for this. Had sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everyone thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? Uh, yeah, we'll pay him. You toss a sliver of silver... Say that 15 times twice. On the table. Both men look at you with surprise. Had Jessica's me gestures meekly at a variety of junk from his stool. Take whatever you like. Only thing I'd like is the name of the place. Nobleman, up by the east wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel. Disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Gunnels. This guy's pretty cool. Are we, done? Are we done here? Gunnulf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No, just bought them when we were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. Better than an eggplant. Gunnulf goes off to look at some more stalls. Eric, that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be a scalping, and if they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. The old man is a mead hall. Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these scales on the ground. I'm going to go find him. I'll meet you there. Shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. Let's head to the meat house. You arrive in front of what must be the m nobleman. A few mer minutes later, Eric appears with a le weather beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eric says over his, over his shoulder. Ready? You walking through the front door? They ran to a meat house, says Valgard. I'll be surprised if they can stand up straight right now. Okay, here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of the table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scalfings scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Alright, sweet. Let's do this. There's a lot of them over here, so his spinny attack will be nice. He can go over there as well. And these guys can mop up these two. Look at him. Look at Uden. Just standing there like, yeah. I don't even care. I'll just watch this happen. Okay. I want them to come to me if possible. Stone wall. What does stone wall do? Adds one armor to allies and himself while adjacent to an ally. Well, let's do that then. That was an interesting choice. Take 
get a bit of drama. I should I should mention that I'm not exactly I didn't exactly do fantastically during the um at the what's that do? Return the favor, getting hit triggered the counter attack, okay. Um I didn't exact I wasn't exactly brilliant at the multiplayer component of this game back when it came out, so don't expect any amazing strategy from me. I'm just playing on normal and I'll probably still get boned. But to be honest, I'm playing it mainly for the like world and the characters and stuff, which seems pretty fucking awesome. Um Wow, I can do five damage, don't move. Go here. Let's kill him. Didn't mean to do that. What does Riley even do? Gives two willpower to any ally in range. Yeah, we've got four willpower pretty much. Let's just attack this guy. Let's make it get more spicy. Oh, some of the animations, the anim or oh, the animations in general of this game are fucking beautiful, but some of them in particular are really brutal and amazing. Let's go here and go here. <coughs> Sorry. I have a noisy slurp. Oh, that guy. Perfect. Nice. God, that is a big shield wall they've got going on. Go over here. Gunnolf can, can take care of himself, don't worry about him. Let's punch this guy. What's that guy's name again? Oh, didn't notice it. They don't have much health left. One more time. Bam. Whoa! Oh, that was pretty... So hopefully this will be as much of a learning experience for me as it is an entertaining viewing experience for you guys. Alright. Man, they really don't like Gunnolf. Fair enough, I guess. Cannot have much health left, surely. Yeah, only two health left, this isn't gonna go well. Um uh, let's tempest. No. Let's just Cause he's yep, there he goes. I don't think characters die in this. I don't think so, I'm pretty sure they just get wounded and taken out of the fight because there are some fairly important characters that can do combat. A little asshole. <laughs> hurt himself almost as much as he hurt me. Okay. Finish him off. Village! Let's finish him off. That's it. Victory! The foes laying dead at your feet will regret ever crossing your path, if something or other. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Renown. There they are. Gods be damned, I've got to go wash off this blood. Eric is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of blood reds and blues. One banner I know well. Vogner. Next for the Val Kingship last we spoke. The other flag? Looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long? 
Ah, things make a little makes things makes a little more sense. It's not right English. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the great hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favour? What is it? If you happen to stool our guests down at the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eric and Valgard hustle from the meat house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't notice that when I did it last time. It actually shows the fleet of longships coming in. I really like how this looks like with the different layers and the panning and stuff. God, this game, so pretty! So pretty! Vognir. A familiar Val steps onto the docks. In your mind you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant with in purpose. Gods, Uben, you're looking ancient. Comes with being old. And, if there is a Vognir, there must be a Hakon. Must there? Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old Yox. At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Jor Jorundur, Jorundur, Jor... 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 <laughs> I'm not good with Scandinavian names. Jorundur. Jor Jorundur demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grothheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you would that you were so far from home. Just returned from Aberang, in fact. And glad for it. Hakon, Hakon, Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden wolf head emblazoned on red. The king of men, or someone on his behalf. The king's whelp. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grofheim? I have a distinct feeling I've finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but... Ah, uh, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince's delight to behold. Where does Mo Mogir... Mo Mo Mogir... Mogir... I'm going to say Mogir. Where's Mogir? Hakon. Have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading to up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few? Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogir. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. So apparently Uden... Uben? Uben is sort of like a... writer or a history or record keeper for the Vals. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, standing, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Luden looks for all the world like the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be much more interesting than most years, you think. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join... If you're going to join Vogir... Vognira's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. Uh, let's go talk to Hakon. I didn't do this last time. Scrivener! You find Hakon in a meat house surrounded by other Val. Strand is no stranger to Val, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon? Vognir is the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What this time? When I got here, the Great Hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Ha, humans. I guess if I only lived as long as a yox fart, then I might be desperate to make something of myself too. It's not too late to start trying, Hakon. Hakon lets slip a low chuckle. Any Vol could recount his could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swath through dredge at Vognir's side in the Second War, and regularly, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Let's go meet the prince. 
Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Val who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Luden. Yes? You're Vognir? I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Vognir a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grofheim with my guards. Luden looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What a dick. What do you want? Oh, I just hope to introduce myself. You collect taxes for the for the Val territories? A true pleasure. Yes. An awkwardness hangs in the air like a thick fog. You take the opportunity to depart. That wasn't... That didn't go too well. Let's go to the Great Hall. At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply levers. All there, just as promised. To your mild surprise. You wonder if Eric had anything to do with that. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vognir is already there. A while later, Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Mogir steps forward. Vognir is quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. I'm going to click where ready. And I think that'll be enough for this first episode. So I uh, hope you enjoyed, guys. Uh, this has been Madbird playing the Banner Saga, uh, single player. And... Uh, Hope to see you again next time when we'll depart for uh, Grofheim. See you then.